understand that this is the issue and the writer to the Hebrews was presenting exactly what it is that I am trying to present here and that is that there is a better covenant that there is a better ministry that there is a better high priest and all of those things not just the tabernacle itself but all of the law all of the ordinances all of those things that the Lord gave through Moses was given as a copy it was given also as a shadow of the the heavenly things of the true things and the reality is found in Christ Jesus our Lord and it is found on the basis of what he has done for us not on the basis of what we can try and do for him you see there was nothing wrong with the covenant and that is what the writer was referring to especially in verse 7 there was nothing wrong with the old covenant it was not to say that there was something wrong with that it was it was perfect it was absolute it had a perfect purpose but there was a need for a second because he found fault with the people and it was not as if he didn't know that there was fault within us but this certainly provides the evidence it provides the proof it provides the truth and the reality that he was right when he said we could not be like God and that we were truly sinful and that we would have no hope except for the mercy and the grace which he would be able to provide for us in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 it says something else that's very very critical again in verse 6 but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also the mediator of a better covenant you see there is a more excellent ministry and it is different from the old ministry this is an exaggeration of that very reality and he is a mediator of a better covenant which is to say that yes most certainly the old covenant was a good covenant but there is a better covenant there is a much better covenant that is available right now and this has been established on better promises and you can see as I mentioned in an earlier program that that there are better promises there are much better promises that were provided within the new covenant as opposed to the old in the previous program I was talking about the promises in terms of the blessings that were given if you would only obey the law then you would be completely blessed in your flesh you would not really know your God but you would experience many blessings in your flesh and those are promises and those are good promises in some respect but there are better promises and the better promises that are associated with the new covenant is not the blessings in your flesh but it is the blessings in your spirit it is the blessings in your heart it is to receive that which you truly deeply desire in the very basis of your being in the very core of who you are these are the promises that he is offering in the new covenant and these these are the kinds of things that will will not just bless the flesh in a very temporary way these are things that will bless the spirit and these are the kinds of promises that will fulfill the spirit and fulfill you in such a way that you will be able to experience and enjoy these even on into eternity even forever and this is of course a better promise and a better covenant and so if you are still trying to live in the old covenant then my friend the best way that I can express it in context of what is revealed here is that you might be experiencing a covenant that was originally presented and you might be experiencing the benefit of that in terms of revealing to you continually how awful you are and how inadequate you truly are but you're never going to be able to really experience the reality of the new life that you have been already given in Christ Jesus if you have in fact been saved there is a new covenant there is a new life and if you are still turning back to the law then you are living in the shadows not in the reality you're living in some kind of a copy not in the true reality of what we really do have in the new covenant today let me continue reading in verse 8 uh, in verse 8 it says because finding fault with them he says behold the days are coming says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they did not continue in my covenant and I disregarded them says the Lord for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days says the Lord I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people none of 
of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. And so even the least of them, to the greatest of them, no one has the need of saying, Know the Lord anymore. Because you can all know him. If you are saved, you can know him. You can know him if you would only set aside the old covenant and walk in accordance with the new. And the new covenant is on the basis of what he has done for you so that you can experience his perfect love and acceptance and so that he can provide you with the perfect meaning and purpose in your life that you can then begin to walk in and respond to the world around you on the basis of what it is that you do have instead of on the basis of what you are trying to obtain. And that is a very important issue. That is a critical issue. And the Lord will reveal himself to each one of his children in an individual way and at an individual time for the specific purposes and needs in their, in their life experiences in whatever way that they are experiencing their life. And so in that way, whatever he reveals to me is for me and whatever he reveals to you is for you. And he will reveal things to us as we can receive them, as we can understand them, as we can appreciate them, and as we can apply them. And a lot of that does most certainly have to do with our own personal pride and how it is that, that we respond to what it is that, that he has revealed as clearly being the truth. But understand that he is at least able to do this with us now individually and does not do it collectively as he did this in the Old Covenant. It continues on in Hebrews chapter 8, and in verse 13, it says, In that he says, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. And it is ready to vanish away. The new covenant has effectively been made obsolete. It is not to say that there was something wrong with it. It is to say that it had its purpose, and its purpose has now been replaced with another purpose, with another covenant that is much better. And the old covenant was, do and you will be blessed, but the new covenant is, you are blessed, and so that you can now go and do. But the doing is not a matter of what it is that we do, but it is a matter of what it is that we respond to in accordance with our new relationship with him. If we are resting in the love that he has for, for us, for example, then we will be set free to be able to engage the world and respond to the world in light of the love that we have. And so what we did before, what we did before would have been described very clearly as trying to obtain perfect love from someone else or from something else, but now we have been set free, and so what we can do now is give the love that we have received from our God. That is what the new covenant is about. Now, he says here that the old covenant has been made obsolete, and then says, now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away, because this is a struggle that we will all live with, and this is a struggle that we will all experience in our lives, I'm sure, until the day that we actually pass from this life and enter into the one that is coming. We will always struggle with the law in one form or another. If it's not the law of Moses, it will be our own law that we either create or that we adopt from someone else. And this is just part of the, the, the nature of humanity and part of the situation that we are in. And so it is something that is becoming obsolete, and eventually it will completely vanish away, even though it is ready to vanish away right now. Now, there is also the application of it in the sense that it is still alive, it is still real, it is still available for us to use in the world today, and as we continue to grow in our knowledge and understanding of the Lord and our Messiah Christ Jesus, because what we can see in the law certainly is a lot of descriptions of the character of God, and we can reveal the grace of God within the law as well. I use that quite often. I will teach on the law every every once in a while in order to in order to show the grace of God in terms of the contrast from the old covenant into the new and you can see a great deal in the old covenant if you know what it is you're looking for it can be quite obvious to be able to find it but understand that the law also has its purpose in the sense that while we continually struggle with trying to do the right thing with trying to be the right kind of person it will always be available in order to continually remind us that we cannot live 
in accordance with the law. We cannot live in accordance with what is good and evil. We cannot eventually come to the point of saying that I am righteous and holy in my own self, but we can now, you know, we can use this in the sense of continually reminding us of just what our reality and what our position is. And also what's more important is to be able to apply it for the lost. And it is alive, even though it is obsolete, it can still be applied for the lost. Because the lost does not realize, a person who is lost does not really recognize, does not truly understand the reality that they are not God, and they don't understand that the reality that they can never do anything for God, they could never do anything to obtain their salvation, and they don't really understand that they can do nothing in order to sustain their salvation. And the law is very good to apply in that for particular purpose as well, and uh, and so in that way it is still alive, and while it is obsolete and it has effectively been replaced with the new covenant, it still have its, has its purposes and we should still apply it when we have opportunities to do so. But for the saved, we have a very different relationship with the Lord. With the lost, those who are lost, the relationship with the Lord was on the basis of trying to obtain their relationship with the Lord. That is the relationship that is available to the lost, and that is in accordance with the law. But the law was given in order to demonstrate that this could never be obtained or sustained. And so once a person comes to the recognition and realization of that, then a person can receive what is being offered as a free gift, the free gift of eternal life that will remain within them eternally because there is no sin that can cause that life to leave because of what the Messiah has done for us. And that enables us to enter into the new covenant. Now, the new covenant is not on the basis of the law. You see, the law promised that if you were to obey, you would be able to be blessed in your flesh. The new covenant is if you will only believe, then you will experience new life in your spirit. And the new life that you experience is the new relationship that you now have with your God that you could have never had before. And this is what the new covenant provides for that the old covenant could never provide for. It provides for an opportunity to actually know your God. With the old covenant and the laws thereof, there was never any promise. There was was never anything that was given to suggest anything that you would be able to know your God or to be able to experience a relationship with him. Absolutely nothing. And that is the issue. That is the key point. And that is critical to understand because if you do not understand this, then you will never have an opportunity to accept the relationship that has been offered, that has been made available. This is what you must enter into. This is what you have available. This is what is being offered to you in accordance with the new covenant. That be because of what the Messiah has already done for you, because of what he has already done for you, you are able to receive the free gift of life. You are able to experience his love for you, his perfect acceptance for you. He will then provide you with perfect meaning and purpose in your life. And in the midst of that, it will subsequently fulfill the deepest longings of your heart, such that you will be set free from pursuing the life of sin that you were pursuing before. And that is where you experience the freedom in the new relationship that has been made available is through the fulfillment of your heart such that you will then begin to engage the world on the basis of the love that you have received and so that you are able to share with others what you have instead of being so devoted from trying to obtain from them what they could not possibly give you anyway. And in that way, your sin will most certainly be reduced in your life. It will obviously never go away, but you will be able to walk in a new relationship with the Lord, and you will be able to begin to actually get to know Him personally, whereas you could have never really known Him in any other way before. You have been listening to the broadcast outreach of Living God Ministries with Aaron Budgen. This broadcast is possible because of the prayers and contributions of our listeners. To obtain a copy of today's broadcast, send $5 plus $2 for packaging and postage to Living God Ministries, P.O. Box 38353, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80937, or call 303-359-2550, that is, 303-359-2550, or look us up on the internet at www.livinggodministries.net. That's livinggodministries.net.